Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak in this very important uh, uh, meeting because uh, uh, from one side we are all very deeply concerned about all those violent things going on around us in the world and in our European countries, uh, tragedy in Paris, uh, all terrible things going on uh, on the borders with those people who want to come to European Union and, and face really very, very difficult uh, tests of our capacity to act uh, in concurrence with uh, human rights. But uh, at the same time, uh, we also are facing absolutely different challenges, uh, which are created by rapidly changing uh, technological environments. And uh, I'm sure that everybody of you have uh, in a pocket a smartphone or, or any other facility, iPads and everything. And uh, we know that uh, this type of uh, new facilities, they are emerging every day. And uh, our capacity uh, to, from one side to produce information, to spread information about ourselves in our environment is growing. And is certainly now out of our control. From other side, uh, there are more and more uh, possibilities to collect those data uh, without any permission, without any knowledge, uh, as by private companies uh, and also, uh, regretfully, uh, by the state. Because, for example, uh, the Snowden revelations, they really shocked. Uh, all of us, and then the other, this kind of uh, uh, knowledge. And that's, uh, from that, it's not occasional that uh, the United Nations have taken it as a very serious matter. Uh, in the resolution 68, 167, uh, this issue has been raised as a the matter of, of really analysis and uh, going on with more comprehensive regulations. And our European Union uh, uh, institutions, uh, Council uh, from one side and the European Commission from the other side, also uh, have made uh, quite decisive steps uh, to promote uh, human rights in this technological environment. Uh, we have now a situation, what I can say, report to you, where uh, on the initiative of Council and Commission, the uh, package of data protection reform uh, is uh, on our tables. And uh, I am here really in the capacity of rapporteur on the data protection uh, concerning uh, directive uh, on data protection in the context of uh, law enforcement, and I'm also shadow rapporteur on the general regulation of data protection in the Libe Committee of European Parliament. And uh, uh, we have to celebrate really three years uh, since this uh, uh, process started with uh, providing uh, Parliament uh, with a text. Uh, soon it will be a year when this uh, a legislation was uh, passed in Parliament and voted uh, uh, in uh, uh, March last year. And now we are in a situation where European Council uh, uh, has to uh, give uh, its assessment. And uh, then we can start the trialogue, meaning the process of communication between Commission, Parliament and Council in order to pass the final, final uh, regulations. And, uh, what I can say about this process itself is that we all expect, expect that uh, the end, uh, the, the, the final, this uh, new uh, package will be adopted as soon as possible because really the, the technology is uh, running away with the greatest speed. Uh, the, the amount of data is growing, doubling uh, every, every year. So, uh, the text which was uh, new three years ago uh, now needs uh, sort of full examination also from this side. Isn't there everything in? For example, when we consider this kind of thing like Internet of Things, uh, which is bringing absolutely new situation in our everyday lives, uh, then uh, according to experts, uh, the quite general use of this will be 
not very far away. It, it is said that it could happen in the next five years. Uh, but uh, I'm afraid that in this coming on legislative process, we even now are not able to foresee what are the new challenges created for that. But what we can see is, uh, is the changes which this uh, new, new package, this reform, would bring uh, when it will be uh, at last adopted and turned into law. And uh, in this very short time, I just will point at the main thing, the, the real fundamental things. And uh, uh, I suppose the, the most important is that uh, uh, from one side, uh, we try to create in European Union situation where uh, our citizens or, or people who live and, and work uh, in the countries of European Union will be protected in absolutely similar way, uh, despite where they are living in which member state or even when they travel abroad. Meaning that the uh, present situation where the existing directive uh, 95 uh, uh, 46 have, uh, have really left uh, quite a lot of possibilities for member states to, to apply that uh, in their own, say, uh, context and uh, uh, looking at the, the very different speed of development of uh, digital environment in uh, many countries, I can say that there are very big differences. In my country, in Estonia, uh, we all have uh, opportunity for digital signature we are used to use uh, e-elections, we are used to use e-healthcare, um, e-medical prescriptions, and, and for us it's uh, the, the, the new and very comfortable way uh, to solve our problems. When we come with the same things, for example, we discussed last week uh, with our um, colleague from, from uh, uh, Holland, and, and he said that it's a very beautiful thing, they, they, he, he know that, but if, if in, in Holland, the e-healthcare uh, will be uh, uh, developed, then he will foresee a lot of difficulties because people have a lot of fears, a lot of problems to accept that as a part of their normal procedure. And that, that in Holland, which is very high level in, uh, on the level of the, the usage of digital technologies. So, but if you look at the law enforcement, that it's even, even worse in this sense, that, that uh, you know that we move all around. People are studying in different countries, people living in different countries, and they should know uh, in, in this area that being European citizen, being European uh, the inhabitants, they, they are in each of countries uh, equally protected uh, by any kind of uh, breaching, but uh, there are very big differences in the culture, in traditions, in the, the, the practices of uh, law enforcement in different countries. So uh, that's one thing. One common law, one common set of rules, and one very high level of protection. Then there is the other side. Uh, the privacy, the uh, understanding that everybody is a subject of own data and has a full right uh, to understand and to control uh, what is done with his data. And that will mean that uh, all those provisions which regulate uh, access to data collected about somebody or, or, uh, or to weigh how those data are used, the, 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 the time span, uh, what, what is allowed uh, for usage of data. Um, it, it should be very clearly uh, mm, uh, set uh, by rules and it should be also controlled. And also the assessment of impact of this kind of usage of, of personal data, it should be included. Uh, and uh, here we, we have seen that it is quite difficult sometimes to explain uh, this really very simple thing. Uh, and here we uh, also, I will not blame, but we have to say that, that the everyday the contact with this situation is coming not so much uh, between person and the public authorities, but it's part of everyday uh, commercial practices, uh, e-shopping, uh, internet usage everywhere. And people, especially young people, have so much used uh, to this everyday procedure that even they don't understand, they don't mention when they are giving away their data, the ticking of the box, I agree, is almost uh, uh, automatic. 
And now in this new regulation, uh, what we say is that all this process, the, uh, the consent of individual should be done with clarity, uh, no pages of the, uh, the very complicated text, but quite understandable, reasonable uh, explanation, even with symbolism like in traffic, because uh, could you imagine that in the, the car driving with speed of 100 kilometers per hour, you have to read five, five pages in order to understand. You can't uh, turn to the right or to the left or what you should do. But on the informational highways, we are now in the, the same situation. We, 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 we have to have clear and uh, simple and easily and very rapidly understandable uh, rules and, and signs and symbolics so that we will be in control of the data we are giving up and the, the data which could be used. Then all this situation where the data collected are transferred to other, uh, other organizations, other businesses or other states and so on. What happens to those data? So it's again, the, the, now the, the very clear and very important part of this, uh, all this uh, process, uh, to put very clear rules. The, the fundamental rule is that the data which are collected for some purpose, they cannot be used for any other purpose without the consent of the data subject. And now the, uh, problem of surveillance. Uh, surveillance, which is, uh, yes, it could be done by the, the public authorities, uh, but also it could be done by, by any businesses. All big supermarkets, they, they, they have collected a lot of uh, data about all of us. And uh, uh, I had uh, uh, this talk with uh, uh, people uh, in our Ministry of uh, Interior uh, dealing with uh, all kinds of uh, the, the, the police regulations, and they said, that's very convenient. Uh, when we try to find uh, some criminal, we know that these data are stored in our hypermarkets. We can go there and we can ask, for example, who had bought, uh, say, this or that a uh, year ago or two years ago, and, then, and we know that in any case we find something. So this uh, looking for something and retaining data for something and giving them up uh, uh, to, to the authorities without uh, clear, uh, clear uh, uh, defined purpose, uh, it will not be uh, allowed, not be possible. Uh, and even more, uh, all these businesses who are dealing with data collection in the course of their activities, uh, they should be aware that they are to also part of all this regulation. They should have the clear institutionally arranged control over the usage of the data. Uh, and uh, here we uh, uh, come to, uh, by my mind, one of the most important uh, part of all that regulation package. That is a data protection by default and by design. Because if you see how quickly all the technologies are developing, then to rely on capacity of a person uh, to go by, to understand, to make this uh, informed uh, decision, choice. Uh, it is, uh, I will say, very, in, in very, very big part of the cases, really not possible. It's over the capacity, the psychological capacity of the person. And, and that's why uh, in this new regulation, there is a very strong uh, uh, focus on the technology itself. Uh, on the uh, uh, inbuilt, uh, inbuilt uh, say, processes and practices and algorithms, uh, which uh, will then protect uh, personal data and will really ensure uh, that uh, these rules should be or has to have to be implemented, which are in regulation. Just the technology will work in this way, uh, and here. Uh, I will say that also, when we speak with business communities, they are really very much, uh, I would say, even excited, because they see that here there are new avenues also for for <coughs> development of technologies, having in mind the new new quality, even maybe new competitive advantages. Uh, 
but from other side also, there is also a threat that uh, inbuilt could be also the other kind of uh, technological solutions which give, for example, authorities uh, possibility to use, again, uh, technologies in automatic way uh, to have surveillance data or to interfere in the personal communications. And that means that all this uh, uh, problem of uh, balance between uh, the protection of personal data uh, in technological environment and from other side uh, uh, providing the necessary uh, tools for public authorities uh, in the field of security, uh, national security, personal security, that is becoming one of the focal point. And I have to say that uh, in uh, our discussions in Parliament, in Libe Committee, uh, it, it, in the last weeks, especially after uh, the, the new situation, psychologically new situation after uh, Charlie uh, tragedy, uh, it, it, is, it is really a very difficult thing. Because uh, if people are led by fear, uh, then uh, the protection of personal human rights uh, it's, it's, it's not always acknowledged as an equal uh, or yeah, equal, equal important because to preserve one's life it's also human right. But in this situation it's very really uh, easy uh, under the pretext of fight uh, against terrorism and protecting human lives uh, to go further, to breach the lines and uh, to give red light for mass surveillance, to give red light for intervention in private life and so on. So uh, in our Libre Committee, we are keeping, uh, try to keep this balance on place. Uh, so that to find the, 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 the needed compromises, but uh, not given away the, the principles of this new data protection package. Uh, so uh, I will not speak about the, the big administrative problems and new novelties uh, with one stop shop and, and all those things because it's not so much the area to be discussed maybe today here. Uh, I, I only have to say that uh, if this package will be passed at last, uh, then we will have uh, in some sense a uh, new situation, new architecture uh, which could really guarantee for European uh, people, citizens, uh, inhabitants, uh, that uh, their right for privacy, uh, their the, the ability to control their data, uh, to, 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 to act as a knowledgeable uh, individuals, it's really uh, guaranteed on a much better level. And I have to say that here also a big part is played by the, not only European Union, but also Council of Europe in Strasbourg. And I really turn your attention to that, that the uh, Council of Europe in Strasbourg have uh, produced a very, very, very important document. Uh, that is a, a handbook, really, handbook uh, about digital rights of people. So, and it's very much targeted towards the young people uh, and uh, toward teachers and so on, because uh, we see that children, young people, they, they are really acting very, uh, as a very, very, say, um, uh, pioneering, uh, subjects in this field, but uh, they are really very vulnerable. And in all our package also, the right of the children, they are specially mentioned and specially protected because uh, uh, the, in this new situation, uh, it's becoming more and more important. I will not describe all, all dangers, you know them also, what, what are emerging here. Uh, so I'm sorry that I cannot say you the date, I cannot say you when it all will happen. Uh, we do our best uh, that uh, this process will go on smoothly um, and uh, that we will have this new, uh, new structure of protection of human rights uh, in this digital age uh, uh, sooner than the technology itself will maybe turn futile uh, some of those efforts. Thank you.